you're listening to the Energy is Love podcast. Hey. Hey. I'm excited for this one. Are you? Yeah. Okay. I'm really excited this idea. I thought this is going to be interesting. Yeah. Because I don't know if I've actually spent very much time processing this question very much. Right? Right. So we get to process it in real time with you. Yes. Like we know what we're going to talk about, but we don't know. But we don't know. We don't know what we're going to It's going to be a mystery. And we did like the perfect podcast hosting where we both took a drink at did the same we? time. Well, yeah, we did. We're professionals. <laughs> Synchronistic union. <laughs> <laughs> so the question that we are posing to each other today, and we're going to answer and talk about and elaborate on, and hopefully you'll get some insight, is what is the greatest... See, I forgot the question. <laughs> How did we phrase it? What is the greatest tool I that it helped down. you the most along your healing journey how funny is like that? that so like we, to- we told you we knew what we were going to talk about but we didn't know what we were right. going to talk about let's see what the act because i wrote it down we had verbatim, the most impactful the most impactful tool yeah. say the whole thing what's the most impactful thing for thing you on for your me. healing journey what there has it go. been right because okay. obviously there's a smorgasbord of things that have been helpful and useful and made an impact but <laughs> What's one or two really impactful things that, reflecting back, you have been able to gleam as like real key moments along the mm-hmm. path of healing? Well, I think, are you ready? I'm ready. I think you should go first. Okay. <laughs> Mine, the, the first thing that stands out, and I'm sure there'll be more, right, as we sit and process this a little bit more, but I really recognized when things started to shift and change for me in a really big way, when I started to get help and when I started to open up to help. Because for a very, very long time, I was doing everything by myself, trying to figure it all out by myself. And I still do this like on a pretty regular basis. I still kind of revert back to the whole idea of just like, I good, I got it. I don't need any help. I'll figure it out. But I think it was, let's see. I want to put some, because I've had help all along the way. Like that's the whole thing too, right? Where you recognize that there were all these little moments or people or uh, events, right? Sometimes they were definitely, not sometimes, but everything's always like divinely guided, right? Yeah. So you've had help all along the way. However, there's some key moments where I am aware of me like accepting help as opposed to help just happening. And I think that's like a a key thing. <laughs> I can't think of the right word. I don't want to yeah. just keep saying thing, but because you're always helped and supported along the way, right? The mm-hmm. universe is literally like just carrying you along the way. And you're like, this is such a hard journey. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. And the universe is like, is it hard? Are you having a hard time? Because I'm the one that's literally carrying you through everything, right? It's this unconditionally loved, supported journey that we're on that just appears to be challenging. So I'm I'm supported all along the way, but I don't realize that until like today, right? I'm still struggling to try to put that piece together. But at some point along the way, I allowed help in consciously. Yeah. Where I was like, oh my gosh, I really need some help here. And mm-hmm. so I started letting it in. And it was a big, because um, I was trying to think about it too, like when did that exactly happen? And I think it was around that time period of going on that men's retreat and getting really involved in men's work. And that to me was a big, like, opening up and allowing help into my space, even though it was definitely not, like, smooth. Right. (laughs) It was very rocky. Because that was, like, a catalyst moment, I think, not just for a lot of work that was taking place and that I was going through, but also letting other people help me along the way. And then that also led into actual therapy, I think, right? Where that was another big component, obviously, because that's, like, hey, very specific, direct, I need help. (laughs) Right. So I think that was a big part for me is getting help and allowing myself to receive help. That's a big deal, that allowing yourself to receive it too because not resisting the help that comes at you but actively seeking it out and receiving. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the receiving part was the hard part because I think it's all of those stories that I've told myself over the years of my worth and my value and not really deserving of help or worthy of help and then also like all the programming in regards to 
you know, how we're supposed to be doing all of these things by ourselves and we're supposed mm-hmm. to know the answers and we're supposed to have it all figured out and I don't need help. I can do it all by myself. And mm-hmm. I mean, that narrative still gets me. I still struggle with help, even just the silliest of simple things like with our everyday life. But by and large, like my resistance to it, I feel is no longer present. And now the only thing that shows up for me is like the subconscious programming that obviously is going to take a long time to kind of shift and change. Because I let it in all the time. Yeah, you do so good with that. actively looking for help a lot and (laughs) asking for help and... Yeah. It's so much deeper than just like, just finally allowing help in and, you know, because you were resistant to it. It's because like, when you take it another layer, right, going in a little deeper, a little farther back, help wasn't always safe. The help you received wasn't safe. So it's not just a resistance of, I can do it, I'll do it all by myself, I don't need any help. It's like, no, absolutely, why would I? Of course I'm going to do it by myself because I'm protecting myself. And then to find that safety of where you're like a finding healthy help, right. finding safe help to allow that, to recognize it and let that in. That's like layers upon layers. So how you said, like you've been getting help all along, you've been doing work all along, but it really like started shifting once like this transformed and you had to work really hard to get there. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. It was quite a bit. And then what, and then you just, like that's the most impactful is finally when you were able to receive that. Or that's what you're so. recognizing right now. Yeah, I think that's one of the most impactful moments. Yeah. That's so beautiful. It was just the allowance of help into my like into my space, into my heart, into my journey. And not and I also think that like my relationship with help has evolved over the years. Cause help doesn't necessarily have to look like therapy right it doesn't have to look like the one-on-one interaction with somebody it doesn't have to look like coaching or mentorship or something right help can look like i think a lot of times when i listen to podcasts i get a lot of help but i'm listening with those ears now as opposed to i mean i used to just listen to podcasts for entertainment purposes yeah and like sometimes it would be like i'm gathering knowledge but now I'm listening specifically for help yeah. where I'm wanting to hear what the other people are saying and what they're, you know, sharing and resonating with. And so I'm listening with helping ears in mind rather than just kind of consuming content for entertainment, you know, value. <laughs> so that was a big deal. Yeah. And it that still happens all the time. Like I'm still looking for avenues and resources for help like we find people all the time online that just have like such a wealth of information and I was thinking about this too where we have a time in history right now in the world right with the internet and the ability to connect and communicate and share information and I know that it's always like this mixed bag where there's pros and cons to it of course but yeah I think the really big thing Like I think, now this is through my lens and through my perspective, right? Because so much of what we are looking at as well as how we see things is through the lens of like this healing journey experience where we're constantly evolving and working on ourselves. So that's a lot of what we're consuming. Those are a lot of things that the algorithm is feeding us. But I also think that because we follow like therapists online, right? On social media. And I don't remember a time period before where like a therapist would have right like this social media account where they were just sharing insight and knowledge and wisdom and it's not to say that like all of them are great cuz they're human everybody's human right <laughs> you resonate with the ones you resonate with but i think about the stigma that is being slowly melted away by humanizing mental health professionals and the profession or even just the mental health space mm-hmm. And yeah, some of it's not always accurate. Some of it's not right. Uh, Somebody might be, you know, not doing the most up and up type of situation or help or all of these things apply, of course. But at the same time, I think there's this massive shift that is taking place where all of this help is not only free and available. I mean, you could literally like get copious amounts of help from a whole 
smorgasbord. Right. I don't know why that's the word I'm using. I today. love it. It's gonna be in my head all day. <laughs> we gotta go to a buffet afterwards. <laughs> but uh, you could get help from you know everybody for free, yeah. and it doesn't it doesn't take away from the benefit of actually being able to sit down and talk with somebody right. and share your thoughts and your feelings and your emotions, right? But it is a very important component. Yeah. It's a like, start and it's options when before there were only, there was like no options. Right. It was like you don't get help or these are your only options. And it takes this as like it's opened the world up for like acceptability, um, accountability, unity and possibility. Yeah. Like when I was in I my 20s it. looking for therapy. Right. And trying to go to a therapist. That was like the yellow pages. Yeah. It was. And Some it was people also... maybe know what that is. Maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> It was also not easy in the sense of like, I mean, it's not quite as, it's definitely easier today to get help from a therapist or mm -hmm. a counselor or something like that than it was a decade ago or 15 years ago. But it also, it like, it feels like this, it feels like this to me and the medical field still feels this way and mm -hmm. politicians still feel this way where mm -hmm. there's like a bubble around that environment and we're on the outside of it. Yeah. And then it's like you have to cross through like that bubble to then go on to the inside of it where you're looked at as like an outsider, right? Like yeah. if you go to a doctor and you're like, hey, doc, uh, I might, you know, question what you're telling me right now. You're like, are, what, are you crazy? Why would right. you question me? I'm God in this realm, right? Exactly. Let and me tell you what's going on with me. No, I'll tell you what's going on with you. Yeah. Like okay. it, I feel like politicians have that same air, like the mm -hmm. that bubble around them of superiority and like we're the ones that understand everything. And I feel like therapy had that same thing, but that wall now is slowly coming down because we are, you know, listening to them on podcasts and we're seeing them on social media and they're letting us behind the curtain of what it looks like and what it is and what therapy actually involves and they're humanizing right. the profession they and are there maybe there's the medical field maybe there's doctors out there doing the same thing and we're just not seeing it because we're not in that scope maybe. or in that mindset yeah i hope so there's a um oh politician there's some politician guy that i follow and i love it when i th these are the best moments in podcasting we're like let me randomly try to bring up this information in my head that is applicable to this conversation, but then I'll never actually get the information out. So we're all just going to be wondering who this person is that I'm talking about. Like halfway through, you'll be like, so-and-so. I won't remember his name, <laughs> but I feel like he's doing the same thing where like he'll come on and just share because he's like a senator or a congressman or something like that for some I think he's over here in the east, some yeah. eastern southern. You have to name. send it to me when uh, you, but it he, comes it's across. It's like him in his again. kitchen, I'm curious. where he's like, "Hey, I uh, just want to let you guys know what took place today. Uh, you, you know, I'm sure you've heard in the news that we're voting on this bill, or we're trying to get the budget approved or passed. And let me tell you what's happening behind the scenes. And this is what I'm witnessing and seeing from from my perspective. And he's like a brand new, you know, this is his first term in office or whatever." And he's just like, this is what it really looks like. And granted, it's his perception it's and, perception. you know, it's but everything. But still, that's something that's like behind. It's very different. Yeah. And it's a lot different than, like, you don't see a lot of politicians online, on social media, talking. You right. see them in... Like campaigning, in a sense, right. one way or the other. Exactly. But you don't just see, like, hey, this is what's happening on a Tuesday you know, in Congress and I'm telling you what it's, and he's like, literally it's like filmed in his kitchen. Yeah. And I'm sure that it's all being like manufactured and created in his, you know, media department, mm. <laughs> but at the same time it's refreshing. Yeah. And he does a good job of it. My and curiosity is sparked. I'm, I'm intrigued. That, I don't know how we got on this topic from healing journeys and things, the, the but bubble. yeah, like we have help is so readily available now when it comes to your mental and emotional health that it's a prime time opportunity for healing to take place and for everybody to get like this giant leap forward in the healing journey because you're no longer alone. Yeah. Right. You can find comfort in listening to people online. Right. And, I didn't know it wasn't just me. Yeah. 
And I think that's a really, really big deal that we're going to see. I didn't know you see. could get out of this. I didn't know there was help. I didn't. Yeah, yeah. I think we're going to see the benefits of this time period in the next 20 years. Yeah. Because it's going to literally, I think, fast forward healing for people. That'd be lovely. Because again, it's like, you know, in our 20s, like literally 15 years ago, it was a nightmare trying to get help. And there wasn't any, like, it's not like you were listening to, you know, podcasts. Yeah, and, I know that that my therapy journey when I was in my 20s, and it was not this. Right. It was, it was, it was not so helpful. Different. Yeah. So it was harmful. Yeah. It was very harmful. So all those things have been incredibly helpful for me. Let me see if there's another one that I can think of, like another thing that has been a really impactful thing. Oh, yeah. The other thing that really has impacted my journey is my faith yeah. and my belief in something greater than me. Like my faith is, and faith, the word faith, I'm like. It's hard to say. It huh? feels it's uncomfortable like triggering in my body mm. when it comes out of my mouth. I'm like, I'm going to say the word faith and then immediately caveat it with, I'm not talking about religion. This has <laughs> nothing to do with Christianity or whatever other, and all religions are fine. Like I'm not judgmental on religions as a whole. Truthfully, I am judgmental on anyways. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I'm podcast. going in a bunch of random directions. But like, how has it impacted you and helped you on your journey? Yes, on my like journey, your connection. the ability to move forward also knowing that I am loved unconditionally by this greater thing than me gives me so much like peace of mind and comfort and ability to kind of navigate the really difficult times. Yeah. And I didn't always have that. There was a long time where that wasn't present. I mean, it's only within the last couple of years that it's really kind of blossomed into this concrete thing in my life that I can uh, hold on to and gain strength from. So I would say that's another really big beneficial thing is solidifying my belief in something greater than myself. And it's not even like, when I say solidify, it's like, well, I did all the research and read all the <laughs> reports and finally came up with my conclusions in regards to a higher power it is the journey of having enough experiences with that higher power to feel inside that faith and that belief and now that's a big factor behind what drives me yeah is knowing that i am supported and loved so okay that's beautiful i want to hear yours baby love that like i want to talk to that for a minute like that has been that's a big deal in my space too, but it, my journey is much different than yours with that because I, I had a belief my whole life and then there hit a moment like years where I lost. It's like I had to lose my faith to find my faith in a sense. And I, again, that word is really, really challenging, but it's like I had to unpack everything. I had to stop participating in believing in a hateful, spiteful God in order to really find my connection and like the connection with what I believe is a very loving, a very loving creator that is just like loving. It's not spiteful. It's not waiting to damn you to hell yeah, and punish you and sentence you and, and you're only loved if you do this. I'm like, that's the world that, but that was very much, I'm like, like my whole life feeling like I was just like garbage you know pissing god off all the time pissing jesus off not able to like live up to this you know perception that i'm supposed to live up to like well if you repent but also you can't do this because you'll go like so it it just it's either complete conformity or complete damnation and being able to completely lose and stop believing broke free so that when the connection came, I could believe, I could believe in love. I could believe in like, I guess it's just the way to say it is love. Like that there is love. It's just love. It's love no matter what. And there's still part of me that like sometimes like those words are too attached to to the old, to the old, old beliefs and so of it's religion really, really hard because yeah. it's like, how do I take the power back in those words for how they feel in me without the weight of what they used to mean? 
you know, like faith is a beautiful word, but it's hard to say because of the way. <laughs> so like that journey alone of having that is massive to suddenly feel loved and supported and guided as opposed to denied, hated, and punished. You know, that's a big step. That's a big step in it's your journey. Step. And to fill that. And of course, like once you start to have that, you're going to, you know, be able to connect in different ways. And so that's also a part of mine that I didn't, <laughs> I didn't have words for. I, I should have had more awareness, but I didn't, but I get at the awareness now, like how significant of, um, I knew that I know it's a significant step in my journey and a process of like really being, I mean, step sounds so minimal. It's obviously very profound and deep and impactful, but, um, like, I don't think I had the context of like, oh, this is a key component. I had the awareness of, oh, wow, this is such a beautiful thing that I get experience now. I'm so happy this is in my space now and it's changed everything and there's possibilities and like really cutting myself slack for, you know, a lot of things, but I didn't like bring, bring it into a focal point of like, this has been an impactful, um, impactful something I don't know what to say either thing right in my healing journey it's been a significant part of it but it came way later into in the it. last few years yeah. right yeah it makes me wonder if like do you feel like if somebody I'm trying to formulate this question I it feels like to me that I had to find it on my own yeah where mm. there's been so many things over the years, right? Obviously going back to religion and religion very much telling us what to think and what to believe and mm -hmm. like not even just from the perspective of like, you know, you should believe this way or you should think this way, but instead it's like, this is the way, this yeah. is the belief, this is reality, this is the construct that you're born into, this is what, you know, and I always resisted that. Mm -hmm. Like I can remember as far back as I can remember, I can remember being like, mm, I don't really like being told <laughs> what to do or what to think. Yeah. And so I've always been resistant to like just subscribing to somebody else's idea of what is or what is supposed to be, even though there's a part of me that would still fall into line with that. Like we talked about this the other day too, where it's like at some point, you mm -hmm. succumb to the pressure of society and culture and what you're supposed to be doing and you just essentially give up on yourself and conform. But when it came to like a deeper religious belief or understanding in something greater than myself, I never really conformed to it. Yeah. And I remember questioning it like when I was a teenager and then I remember just kind of like letting it go and thinking, whatever, I'm not really worried about it. It doesn't really impact my life. I'm not really focused on it. It's not important to me. And then it wasn't until we got together and really had this awakening process and then started really unpacking the past and recognizing like, okay, I, you know, not only is it important to me, but I can no longer move through life without acknowledging this greater thing that I'm a part of. Because yeah. it is so impactful and so important. So I had to come to it on my own. Yeah, It wasn't like somebody couldn't just sit there and be like, this is the thing. This is yeah. how it works, right? This is the creator. This is God. This is the universe, whatever they're going to label it or call it. Mm -hmm. And now you just believe that because I just told you that that's the truth. And be like, ah, fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm wondering, did you have to find it yourself or do you feel like you didn't like you had an easier job of just accepting what you were told <laughs> i had a really hard difficult job of losing the faith like it broke me in a lot of ways to finally like dissolve god dissolve creator and have it not in my um not holding me down anymore and it hurt like it was hard and it stayed hard i'm almost gonna start crying but i'm not i got this <laughs> um but I was so like done with being hurt, right? Um, and then I'm trying to like, cause the universe was significant because then it was like energy and the universe and the way that 
the energy out there where the planets move and affect and like it's so easy to believe in the universe, right? It's so easy. But to see universe as energetic as opposed to like scientific, right? Like there's both. There's both of that. And like that was there, but it became so strong. But there was always something that I wouldn't allow to touch. You know, I'm like, mm, mm, no, 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 I'm not going to. What but do you think I, that is? Um, I think it was just a knowing that there was more, but I wouldn't allow it, you know, because I was done. Like, and that was hard. And it, I, we don't need to get too much into that. But it's like the whole journey has been, you know, it's been a, it's been a journey. It's been a journey. But there was like the moment, and we've talked about it on the podcast before, so I almost feel silly like saying it again. But it was just this, this moment of, because I still would connect with nature. I would still connect with spirit guides. I would still connect with like archangels. And it was so funny because I kept all of these practices that I felt, that I believed, that I connected with. I could see, I could sense, like all of these. And then... Like, it just hit me. I'm like, how, like, you know, in your bones, in your soul that this is here. So if this is here, and then it was just like, okay, so something else is here. There's something big. There's, there's a creator. There's a God in a sense, but I couldn't say the word God. There's something more. I don't know what it is. And it became that I'm like, Obviously, there's something, but I don't. So I started like getting really curious and really looking into other religions and trying to identify and like, what what is it? Like, tell me what God is. Tell me what God is. Let me, where's, where's the God that I relate to? Where is this? Because I know there's something more. And then it's like all these things that are aligning with our spiritual journey, right? That I'm like, okay, is this it? But then it would have this thing. I'm like, no, I don't align with that. So this isn't it. And I'm like, here it is. Here's all these things this aligns, but then here's this one thing. I'm like, oh, that's not it. I don't align with that. I want something that I can just pour myself into that I know, right? That I have that connection because I knew it was there and I just couldn't find it. I mean, there were some religions that were right off the bat, like, nope, that's not it. You know, you knew right away, but I'm like, what is it? There's something out there. And so then it was like clear of like, no matter what it is, it's all the same thing. We're, we're calling it different names, but it's the same thing. But I wanted that I wanted to know, like, who do I pray to? Like, yes, there's, there's the energetic aspect. There's nature, there's guides, there's, you know, there's altars of other things that I would put my energy towards and give like gratitude for and work with in a sense, but something being so significant more, I knew it, but I couldn't find it. And then, you know, we already talked about the journey of how found it but so that's like kind of how it happened like it was a knowing and a searching and but I was searching the wrong way because I was searching for somebody else to tell me what theirs was so I could identify it didn't occur to me that it was like actually what is it in you what is it I'm like oh oh how cool would it be if that's (laughs) what religion taught right like if religion was like hey you were born into a family and this is what our family beliefs are, but it's individual to you as a person. It's not just something that you have to believe because we all believe it. You get to go on your own journey of connecting to whatever your belief is. And this is the things that we use in ours. And there's lots of other ways to do it, but you get to find it yourself because I do agree that it's all the same. Yeah. Right. All religion, I believe, is coming from that same one source of love that we believe in. It just is passed down from generation to generation through all these different filters of time and history right. and experiences and and some innocent, some intentional. Yeah, it's it's not without, you know, it's definitely got a human influence right. on it at this point in time. And in my mind, we're just bypassing all of the human influence of it all and just going straight to the source of it where it's like, I don't need the filters of however you've labeled it as far as, you know, your book or Bible or whatever. Yeah. 
I'm just going straight to the source so then I can have a relationship with that as (laughs) opposed to a relationship with what you say it is or how you define it. So I wish that everything was done that way, Mm -hmm. right? That would be an awesome world to live in where everybody was allowed their own process and their own experience and to develop and cultivate their own relationship with the divine. And I think in some ways they do. I think we just have to shift it up in the way that it's kind of viewed and perceived. And I don't know. Yeah. We're not talking about religion, mm-hmm. even though we're talking about religion. Right we're now. talking about what's been impactful for us. So this has been impactful for us. And this is a little bit about why and how our story and maybe it resonates and maybe it doesn't like this. Just like that's just what's been impactful for us. So what else so has we're been sharing. impactful for you on your journey? Um, so the help is big. Like I couldn't have, like, the thing that stands out as impactful for me, that is the most significant impactful, didn't come without help. But help isn't where I'm labeling it, even though I couldn't have got there without help. So help is absolutely it. But the safe help, the finding help, which led me to the thing. Um, And for me, for me, it's truth. (laughs) Like It's the truth and validating myself and my experience and my journey. So much has been um, like twisted and told that this isn't that, not allowed to see, this isn't real, you're making this up, you're making it this, you're being dramatic, like all of the ways that it's been like not really a big deal. And the big thing that, you know, got drilled in is how much worse other people have it. Like you should be grateful that this is where you are. And then like the story is painted you know, of like, well, people have to deal with this and this and this. So what you have isn't real and isn't valid people. And like, and that was like a loving thing that happened. You know, sometimes we get these stories and these um, beliefs that we basically create on our own based off of our own interpretation from our programmings, right? We're like, okay, well, this must mean this. And then sometimes we get it directly spoken to us like, no, you know, yeah. these so many people have it worse. What you have is not bad. What you experienced is not bad. You need to get over that. Like this is like quit making it about you. Look at what it could be. It could be this. So be grateful. Stop. You know, and I'm like, <laughs> oh. so having things to that um, really terrible things actually seeming like normal and healthy and loving and being like, no, that's love. That's love. And having it come like truth being in, which happened with help of Seeing like actually, actually was. this isn't help healthy. That's this not is hurtful. Love. That's not love. That's control. That's manipulation. That's like all of these other things. What happened to you was really significant and really big deal. And like the truth of like it, it didn't people get afraid of like that weighing them down. And that's not saying it wasn't heavy. It's really fucking heavy to unpack. But it's always been there. It didn't get heavier because I looked at it. It got lighter. I had to go through hell looking through it, right? But what was worse is having it buried, denying myself repeating patterns that I thought were love. Luckily, I, you know, there's so much that I could have repeated that I didn't, but there's so much that I didn't know wasn't normal that I did repeat. There's so much that I didn't learn how to process expressing emotion another way that I did repeat. There is like the lesson that I learned was protect this person at all cost. And I, because that's love, because that's what families do. And that I repeated and I taught because I didn't know. So having the truth, pulling all of this out, which felt like hell inside, which was sinking me and pulling me to darker and darker depths that I was barely keeping my head above water that's heavy. Having the light shined on it and being like, this is the truth. This is not okay. This is really bad. This is really scary. This is stuff that now we're going to look at for how painful and hurtful it was because it started unpacking the layers. And yeah, my life changed and it's affected, you know, everything. It's affected everything, but it's affected other people. And it's really hard because it's also the people that I was supposed to protect, which by the way, never my job, never my job, but like it's liberated the truth. (laughs) The truth shall set you free. (laughs) 
but like it it does when free. you really look at it and then say no and i'm calling it out for what it is and i'm not participating and i'm going to help shine lights for other people like that has been the most impactful thing and there's still like resistance that comes like we'll get a lot of like quit whining about it look at all these baby you know trying to like it's okay it scares you because you haven't like had a safe space to where you could start unpacking that so it's okay that it scares you like it's okay that like it's terrifying i was the same i was like put on your big girl panties you know get over it already quit choosing to i did the same thing we see that all the time like we recently did a reel where we were talking about how like you can't since shit, like can't is a very strong word it makes it sound so definitive like it's really really difficult to heal and to start unpacking all of this stuff and like to quote unquote go through the healing journey process and start actually looking at things and addressing mm -hmm. things and getting help and making change and all of mm -hmm. this stuff it's almost damn near impossible to do that when you're in a fight or flight response, yeah. like when you're activated. And a lot of people are in a survival response right now just because of life yeah. where they don't have the ability to pay their bills. They don't, you know, they're struggling to make rent or house payments or food or like when your financial life is so strained, it keeps you in an activated state out of fear and anxiety and then you add into it, like if your relationship is struggling or if you're right. worried about getting evicted or if your child is sick or right. there's so many factors on a human that the idea of being able to somehow navigate healing mm -hmm. is it's literally, I mean, it's like such an impossible yeah. journey that you have to have some reasonable foundation of security first and foremost. And mm -hmm. so few people do. So we did this real about this right and mm -hmm. you can only share so much like in 90 seconds right and i saw a comment on one of the on this reel where somebody was like you just need to get a job it's about getting a job and keeping a job and i'm like if only thank goodness you shared that piece of advice with the world because nobody had thought about that right like that's <laughs> the only problem here is you just need to quit being so lazy and get a job and quit right. quit being a loser and i'm <laughs> it's what you're talking about where that's not the truth of it. Right. The truth of it is all these other things. And yeah, it would be great if you could just get a job and keep a job, but there's so much more involved in mm -hmm. it. And that real healing needs a safe environment in yes. order to start happening. It's like that saying of like, you can't, when you're in a burning house, you're not worried about what started the fire. You're like, yeah. you got to get out, you got to get out of the burning house. And whether it's like, we're not saying you have to leave your life, but that's just like a metaphor that we're looking at when you're in it. It's not, how did it start? It's like, let's figure like, you got to get out of that first. Then you can look at how did this start? How did this start? Or maybe every house you go into, <laughs> like what's happening? There's a pattern <laughs> first, before you're looking at the patterns, you got to get out. <laughs> yeah. And so it's that like, and that's where I got in my journey, right? I was out of the burning house. I was out of it, but I kept still seeing fire everywhere. Yeah. And so, but the fire, like I was me, everything was internalized in me. And so it's just, now I feel like off, I'm feeling silly. So I have to fight this because I'm feeling really, um, it's that like that old Praga, I'm feeling silly and insignificant and like, why? Like, no, it was none of those things. I'm immediately like my default is to minimize myself, make myself the problem and to fix it. So it's better for, you know? Yeah. Um, but that was like, like, I still have to work on that healing. I still have to work on that because it was very deep and very ingrained and it's hard. So the truth, like really sitting, having somebody help me feel the truth because there was also truth that i saw right but i didn't couldn't really own couldn't couldn't own but i couldn't really feel i'm like yeah that was messed up i know that was messed up all surfaced yeah i know that was messed up yeah maybe that had some impact but you know it doesn't really bother me anymore i think about it all the time but it doesn't really bother <laughs> me anymore <laughs> without you know I, i'm not expecting you to go into great detail or anything <sighs> like that but can you think of like some overarching big truths I, i'm that 
what do you mean? Like, are you trying? I'm not going like, to get into details about yeah, a trauma. That's definitely. Not what this. Yeah, that's not what I'm asking or what I'm okay. looking for. Because I'm relating a lot with what you're saying. Okay. I think it was a very impactful part of my journey as well. Yeah. Of looking at the truth of situations, mm -hmm. right? Um, like, I'll give you an example. And this is like what I'm talking about is overarching truths that helped me on my journey that right. I had to eventually come to. And like one of the really big truths that I had to understand and make peace with is a truth that has since understanding it has shaped and molded my journey in a really impactful way. Yeah. So like the truth of two things can be right and that two opposite things can exist in the same space and time mm -hmm. and both of those things can be true. And that truth, like making peace with that truth and now having that truth kind of installed in my body or programmed or, you know, whatever, right? Having that as a lens to now look back throughout space and time and see my journey, I can see how that is the case where... Mm -hmm. The reality is I grew up with two older brothers. I was the youngest of three. And the, the a truth of that story is I was picked on, belittled, abused, hurt, um, bullied, you know, any other adjective or label that I can add on there. And that is true. And I also had a lot of fun hanging out with my older brothers and growing up with two older brothers. Yeah. Those two things can be true at the same time. And I used to just see, I should be grateful that, you know, I had two older brothers. Like I used to just try to focus on the truth of like a, the rosy picture that we paint inside of our own minds in order yeah. to survive. Right. I used to just try to focus on that and let everything else go because I wasn't, you know, I'm not being reasonable or whatever, right? But the reality is that it was both of those things yeah. where those two things existed. It's the same thing with my parents where the truth of it is, you know, I had a roof over my head. I had clothes. I, I was cared for on one level and on mm -hmm. one set of, you know, a, a list of a definition of this is how you take care of a child. A lot of those things were checked on my list. And there's another list of abuse that took place that mm -hmm. I had to experience. And both of those things are true. And so it's more of like, what are some overarching lessons that come with this truth component that have been impactful for you? Okay, I don't really understand how you just summarized all of that into a question for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> when you think about the idea of seeing the truth of things, are there any really big truths that stand out? That I've had to make space for both ends to be true? Maybe not. I mean, yes and no, right? Maybe the the duality of two things can be true at the same time, even if mm -hmm. they're kind of seemingly opposites. But what are some other ones, maybe some other truths that stand out? And <laughs> we can move the fuck on, babe, if this isn't making I'm sense. I'm trying. I'm trying really hard. I just think it's a really impactful awareness point yeah. that really shifted and changed a lot of things. Uh, Being able to go back and reflect on the truth of what your experiences actually were. I, I guess I'll, I'll try here. I'm struggling. I was really, really vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And then it got hard to carry that weight. And then the energy really shifted. And then I was like listening to you be vulnerable and you're like back to vulnerability and pinpoint something. It just like that felt like chaotic <laughs> and trying to um, point that back in my body. Um, I think, I guess one of the truths that I'm really like struggling with right now because um. Like it's it's almost like feeling like they can't both exist. Like I know many areas where I see they both exist, but there's some areas that are really hard to both exist. And everything is about like everybody's always talking about forgiveness. Like you have to forgive, you have to forgive, you have to forgive. And like 
I don't know, forgiveness has been used as a weapon too. Like, like, why can't you just forget that? Like, get over, like, I've done all these things. I've made up for it. You know, like you can't tell me when, you know, you're still repeating patterns that I should forgive you for the patterns that you're still repeating. Cause you don't repeat them. I'm like, mm, you are though. <laughs> <laughs> um, so there's also with the truth has come in some intense, like separation where I understood that forgiveness would, um, was a necessary part, but I also knew that like that comes on my own journey. That comes on my own time. That forgiveness is for me. Like it, it it may set both people free, but forgiveness is for me. It's not, I don't owe you my forgiveness. You like for, you may receive my forgiveness, but you are not owed my forgiveness. You may want it, but you do, you're not owed my forgiveness. You can forgive yourself, but expecting me to forgive is like, no, I don't owe you that. Um, so allowing space for that, knowing that it would come and almost being afraid that it wouldn't, right? But the tricky thing that's coming up lately is emotions. It's it's confusing to the really hurt parts of me and to the parts of me that see the totality of things when forgiveness starts to creep in. So the duality for both of those is hard because I'm like, I don't understand how I could forgive. And it like confuses a little bit because how much like as a child you were expected to. And then you hit a point where you're like, oh, I know the game now. I'm not playing it. So now my heart's over here. So you, you check out of that and you're protecting in the self because shit still goes down, but it doesn't affect you as much because now you know shit's going down. You know, even though it's still somehow your fault. And it, anyways, it's so calm. It's so, f your brain's so fucked, right? But forgiveness creeping in is weird. Because you don't really know what to do with it. And forgiving somebody doesn't mean they now have access to you. But you, it's like a whole other process in your healing, which you have to like get help with and figure out the truth of it is because it happens. And it's weird to hold space for missing a sense and like, like forgiving seeing the innocence of somebody and like seeing their, like just, un, like it doesn't condone anything, right? But really seeing just their hurt coming out and hurting. So when you forgive, you, you see the person. But there's still parts of you that's not done taking care of the little parts of you. So it's confusing. And you're like, oh, it's it's like it's a whole other thing that is like trying to navigate through. And it's I wonder if that'll be it's like a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it is it's, a lot. It's a big part. It's like so there's two truths, but like I don't know how to hold them both right now. I'm figuring it out. I wonder if these are the big ones. Obviously, there's a lot of forgiveness, but these are some big ones. I wonder you know? if forgiveness is like the next oh. impactful thing that we'll in experience on our <laughs> healing journey. So when we record this episode in five years again and be like, hey, we've got this great idea. Let's talk about, did we ever do this? I don't think so. It's great. Let's do it. <laughs> and we'll be like, what's the most impactful thing on your healing journey? Forgiveness. The ability to forgive. Because it, it is such a crucial part of the process I forgave myself a few yeah. years back and that has been super critical, I think, for me on my path and on my journey because I had enough, like the totality of being able to see my actions, my choices, my decisions, the things that I carry shame for over the course of my life, seeing where they're correlated and connected to. And it's really easy for me to have compassion for myself and all these other kind of parts of me over space and time because of understanding what shape it, shaped and molded those actions and decisions of, you know, child version, teenage version, adult version of me. And I've learned how to forgive myself, but that process is still <laughs> ongoing. Like yeah. it's still, I, I will still have to lean into forgiveness of myself and practice it and practice it and practice it because 
grabbing a hold of all of my shame is really easy. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a, it's like an old friend. It's like a drinking buddy that calls you up and you know what to do, wants right? to go out on a Friday night. And you're like, if I go out with this motherfucker on Friday night just to grab a beer, I'm not coming home till Sunday morning <laughs> in handcuffs or something, right? Like it's such a comfortable thing to put on all that shame. But at the same time, it's so horribly uncomfortable where I never want to put it on anymore like the way that I used to. So I have to really continually practice that forgiveness part for myself. And I haven't done the best with extending that practice outwards. Yeah. So that's another big part of it, I'm sure, that I'm working on in some ways is learning how to it's like uh it's like varying degrees of forgiveness right? right and it probably always will be it's like everything else where i'm sure you're probably thinking that one day you'll get to a point where you'll reach 10th degree level forgiveness and now it won't be hard anymore but my guess is it'll <laughs> always be hard same with grief right Right. Grief doesn't go away. No, grief comes with forgiveness. Right. If you forgive, you have to grieve. <laughs> you just get the joy of carrying it all with yourself for the rest of your life. Like for me, I focused on forgiveness. Like I read books <laughs> on forgiveness. There's some really good books too. Yeah. But the only thing they did is like, yeah, there's practices that I try to do, but I would just feel worse because how can if these people are forgiving these horrific things and why can't I forgive these things? Because it's again, that's have it so much worse so I just was like feeling worse about myself because I couldn't forgive these big things and like I decided to forgive all the time right I will forgive and then finally I was just like I'm not going to like I don't need to just I don't have to forgive like I let it go I let go of my goal being to forgive because all I was doing was hurting myself so I just stopped I didn't care about forgiving um I focused on healing and forgiveness is spontaneously happening the more healing I do. So I don't have to worry about, which is nice, right? I don't have to worry about forgiving, but when it spontaneously happens, it's like, oh, I do have to worry about how to figure out how to handle forgiving and the different channels because it's a new section of my heart that's opening up and it's also a new section of hurt because when you forgive you see the loss so you're doing such an amazing I'm job so, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for saying that because yeah. i'm over here just like <gasps> you're okay. kicking ass on your healing journey babe well thank you for saying that yeah thank you saying that to me the last thing that i want to speak to and then we can we can wrap up but i oh. think another critical component is and it goes in conjunction with like all these things that we've talked about but it's trust like learning how to trust myself mm. and it also came with like the help portion right mm -hmm. is trusting that help and it's like because i think about not all help like there was help that i let in that ended up hurting me, right? Yeah. There were people that I let into my space that the end result was more pain. Yeah. And I used, you know, that used to be like the program of like, well, that's why I don't trust people. That's why I don't let people in. But recognizing and being able to discern between that doesn't negate the help. Uh, people are human. And... I also am the same, right? Where like, obviously we love helping people and I love helping people. Like I love, you know, from the thing of like helping you move, showing up and lifting heavy things, you know, sitting down with people. And I love helping people, period. But my help sometimes hurts and sometimes I mess up and sometimes I don't do the best job helping the way that that person really fully needed in the moment. Sometimes I drop the ball. So learning how to trust, but then also trust myself and along the way recognizing that like, I'm gonna make mistakes, it's okay. I'm still worthy, <laughs> I'm still lovable. I'm on this path, I'm on this journey, but trust was a really big part. I think too, like 
when I think about our relationship, how many years we spent not really trusting each other, right? Like consciously maybe saying things that I trust you, you trust me, like doing acts that would strengthen trust in our relationship. But I think there was always like some activated part of us in the background, just like pacing, being like, I don't trust this. I don't trust this. I don't trust this. Yes. It's like the lion at the zoo that just goes back and forth in its right. cage. Being like, wait for somebody to kill. I'm not safe. Something's right. happening. <laughs> like we didn't trust Nothing. each other for a really long time. Yeah. And, you know, who knows? Who knows the rhyme or reason of why we eventually got to the point where we can trust each other. But I think that's a critical component as well. So like you got to let help in. You got to be able to trust people. You got to have faith in something greater. You got to forgive yourself. You got to do all of these things. You got to look at the truth of the reality of what you experienced and yeah, and all of these are really a critical. a lot of time and a lot of work. Right. It's yeah. A lot of work. Yeah. So many things like always major big caveat around everything is it's not a, it's not an end goal in mind. Yeah. You're going to be healing for the entirety of your life, period. And I'm okay with that. I didn't used to be okay with yeah. that. I used to be like, we got to get this shit squared away by 40. Right. <laughs> we were like real adults. Son, get over it too. We're not Let's dealing get this with all so taken care yeah. of. You know, we can devote two years to this healing right. thing. Then we'll get it done and then right. we'll be able to live our lives. So foolish. Yeah. We'll never be finished. <laughs> so My hope would laugh at me too. And I'm like, well, how does this keep coming? Like, how am I <laughs> dealing with this? I've done so much. What the fuck? Right. She's like, yeah, yeah, I guess you're not done yet, huh? I know you expected it to be over. <laughs> I did. I did expect it to be over. I put in hard work. Why are we not done? I did the things. Yep. It was so hard. Okay, let's move on. Every episode we answer a question. <sighs> Thank you for submitting your questions. You can do that via Wiggle email. My body. You can send us a message on any social media platform. And we really dig it when people call us and mm -hmm. leave their questions so you can leave a voicemail and we will play that on the podcast. If you want to call those in, the number's down in the show notes, but it's also here if you want it. It's 423-521-0355. So this week's question is... Are you all right? Let's hear it, babe. Okay. I've been with my partner for a good 16 years, and now that our kids are all grown up, it's just the two of us. Our relationship is stable, but something feels off. I can't quite put my finger on it, but it's more than just us. It's like I've lost touch with life itself. I really want to get that deep connection back with my partner and honestly with myself. But here I am stuck in this rut and it's getting kind of lonely. How do I gracefully handle this phase of life, rediscover my purpose and feel the warmth and closeness again? Mm -hmm. Okay. That's a good question. Uh, you've been with your partner for 16 years, so that's longer than us. So you <laughs> have the answer. <laughs> no, it's, we talk about this a lot too, where anytime there's a transition in life, it's always going to come with stuff, right? Transitions happen all the time in so many different ways, relationships ending, kids moving out, uh, new jobs, moving, you know, different locations, all these different transitions, life and death, uh, birth, all those things happen. And this is a big transition phase in life. We've experienced it. We're almost, we've got one more kid who will be 18 next year and is on his journey into, you know, experiencing life however he experiences it. So it never gets easy going through transitions, but things that have helped us, especially this one, because you're essentially ending a phase of your life of being a parent, like day in and day out being a parent, right? And going, you're still a parent, obviously, and you still have a relationship with your children after the fact, and all of those things are still applicable. But you have to honor what just took place. Like that phase of your life is coming to an end, and it comes with grief, and it comes with overwhelm, and it comes with joy, and it comes with happiness. And like one of the things that we practice a lot, and I think it's helpful and beneficial, and this just happened the other day for us, where you will have moments over the course of your life where you will get flashes and memories and experiences that you had with your children over the course of, you know, that time period where they were in your home and where you were raising your kids. And when those happen, 
really allow yourself the opportunity to fill into those things and to experience those emotions that come up from those memories that we get, because that is what the healing process looks like, where if you suddenly get a flash of when your child was, you know, a newborn or a toddler or something like that, and you get those memories come flooding back, allow yourself to feel them, allow yourself to experience them, the joy and the sadness and the grief and everything else in between, because that is what it's all about. It's about those experiences and it's about those relationships and how impactful they are. It's literally about love. Like the greater the love that exists, the greater the grief that comes with it. And you have to recognize that it's just part of the game. Like it's part of life and it's part of the process. And your resistance to feeling into all of these uncomfortable places and feeling into the sadness that might be coming up for you is what will keep you stuck in it longer. So the rut that you're talking about and feeling like things, you know, may or may, like they're going downhill in a sense and you want to break free of this cycle and into this new phase, you have to lean into all the uncomfortable stuff that comes with it. Otherwise, it's just adding to the baggage that you have to continue to carry in life. And you've got a new opportunity here and a new phase that's unfolding. And it sounds like the relationship, right, is good, but yet they're at this new spot. So that's the encouragement is get comfortable feeling into the sadness and into this moment. And then get curious about what's next. Because one thing ends, that means something else is coming. There's a new thing that's going to be born. You have a new life ahead of you here that gets to take shape and that you get to create. Maybe that's with your partner. Maybe you get to create it by yourself, whatever that is. But you get to, I'm holding back a burp, excuse me. <laughs> you get to experience that process as well. And it's it's a scary time. It's an exciting time. Uh, help is massively important. Mm -hmm. There's plenty of people out there to help you through this phase of life. There's a lot of people that have gone through it as well. So any resources like that, whether it be podcasts or following people online or reading books about, you know, that empty nest syndrome and having that phase of your life kind of happen and going through it, that's an important thing to recognize and to process. But it's also just one other step on the journey. And so that would be the big encouragement is just to lean into all of it and get really curious about what's next, not from the perspective of, oh, I don't like when we when we look forward in time through the lens of our pain and our sadness and our sorrow and what we no longer have, it keeps us stuck in a really unhealthy pattern. You have to be able to look forward with new insight into what potentially exists that you can create and step into. And you also get to carry that sadness and that shame and that grief and all of those things along with you. But you can't let it shape how you're looking forward. Otherwise, all you're going to see is the past. All you're going to see is the pain. All you're going to see is the loss and how they're no longer here. And, you know, you're and what am I supposed to do now? And if you just look through that lens, that's what life's going to look like. So you have to carry it with you, but also allow yourself to see things from a new perspective. And truthfully, we use the word curiosity and getting curious and like it is the simplest, gentlest way of kind of looking at things through fresh eyes where you just want to get curious about seeing your life in a way that you hadn't seen it before. And well, it's like, how do I do that? Ah, there you go. You have to get curious. <laughs> you have to be like, what am I missing here? What am I not seeing that maybe is right in front of my face? I just wasn't looking at it. And so, yeah. What would you add? So you pretty much covered all of it. Like you hit <laughs> like all the things. Um, I think I would add that like, first of all, giving yourself grace in the space and realizing that um, this is new. This is a whole life switch. Like you and your partner. Um, it's like when you're when you become parents, like that's new. That's a shift. You have to the way that it was is like past, like you're always going to be a parent now, no matter what it looks like, you're, you're a parent. And it looks, you know, 16 years together. So there was a part where this relationship was new and what you built it on. It sounds like, you know, you probably already had kids coming in, um, just with the age, like the time frame. if I'm, if I'm reading into that, right, I might not be, if I am not, I apologize, but 
things were just like this way. So everything was building on with these, like these kids in the space and this already setting and where you were going. And now you're kid free and it's just the two of you. And it's really like looking at like, this is new. You don't know how to be like, you haven't done it before. So it's okay that you're like, now what? Because a lot of times we get stuck on trying to feel okay by thinking we need to fill those spaces with what was, with what we know, as opposed to allowing it to be new, allowing it to be something different. And so, um, like this is a, this is a new phase and it's okay that you don't know how to do it yet. And that it feels weird and it feels like there's something missing because there is something missing, right? The old, the old, the way that things used to be, but now they get to be a new way. And so you nailed it with the curiosity, just getting curious about what this gets to look like instead of rediscovering your purpose. Now you get to discover because it's different. You're different. What your purpose was 20 years ago 16 years ago, 30 years ago is different. And maybe it's not. If you're like, no, this is still my purpose, then go for it. (laughs) Then go for it. But you are a different person. So even if it's the same, it's likely going to look different. So getting curious about what feels good now with new filters, with new eyes, not what used to feel good. So this is what I'll do. And like with your life, Like it gets to include your partner. It gets to include just you. Like what are you looking forward to? Like what space can you fill? What what can you generate and create an experience for the first time in your new life? And there's still so much there. You know, everything isn't gone. You still get to pull in from different areas, but you get to get curious about it. And we do get stuck in a rut with our partner for long times when we go through transitions because we only know how to go through this new thing with old filters. So trying to like, well, leaving room for you to do something different or for them to do something different or dealing with the fact that maybe they won't do something different and it's the same thing over and you're changing and they're trying to hold on to the space or vice versa. You're like, you're changing too much and I want it the way it is. So it's really figuring out and allowing the space for both of you to work through it, but really honing in on what do you want to do different? Like, I don't know what, what would it look like to like spark some flirty? You have some space now. You got it. You got an empty house, right? Like, I don't know walk around the corner naked and be like, what do you feel like doing today? (laughs) You know, (laughs) Just like there's different ways to spark funness and what does it feel like now and what do we get to do now and just create a whole new space. You're still you. You're not losing you. You're still you. But what feels more you now in this new space as you've changed into? Yeah, I think we have a way of moving through life when we, you know, essentially you have a routine of how you live and how you move mm-hmm. through life. And and when there's a big transition and life suddenly is different than it was yesterday, you have to move through that new life in a different way. Otherwise, it's always going to feel like you're stuck because you're trying to go through life in a normal routine, but you aren't living that life anymore. You're living a new life, which means it's going to require a new set of skills, a new, a new routine that you have to get curious mm-hmm. about and find instead of just living your old life in the same way in this new life. It doesn't work. That's what happens. So yeah. what are you willing to let go of so you can experience all that's waiting right? for you? What are you willing to let go of? <laughs> doesn't mean you're losing anything. <laughs> you're exactly. just releasing. Yeah. Thank you for the question. Yeah. Again, let thank you so much. Uh, anybody that wants to write in can write in and please call us and leave those voicemails as well. If this resonated with you, this episode was something that landed for you. We would love to hear about it. What has been a really impactful thing on your healing journey? Let mm-hmm. us know. You can email us if you go to info at energy is love. No, wait, <laughs> that's the email address. <laughs> you can send it to us directly. It's info at energy is love dot com. Dot love. Dot love. Energy info at energy is love dot L O V E. Now that we've sub- Efficiently confused you. Just message us. Just go to our website. Or there. And send us a message. (laughs) Because we would love to hear about your healing journey as well. And come hang out with us and do some breath this uh, 18th, 18th of September. Come do some breath work with us. (laughs) Let's go before I confuse them. Let's do it. (laughs) We'll see you guys next week.